Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and I've got an update for you regarding Ripple's partner MoneyGram, which of course, at least in my opinion, is the most notable uh, cu customer that uh, that Ripple has partnered with, not just specifically on RippleNet, yes, of course, utilizing RippleNet, but specifically on-demand liquidity, utilizing XRP as a bridge currency. I mean, they're a household name, MoneyGram, everybody knows who they are. Well, uh, they, uh, they, they, there's news of a brand new partnership with a, uh, a major company. And, uh, and that got me thinking, what is the stock price of MoneyGram? Because I realized I had not checked it in quite a while. I couldn't even tell you the last time that I talked about it on the channel here. And I found that recently it hit its uh, year-to-date high. And it's, it's not down much from that. So I'm going to share with you uh, that. But before we go... Any further, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you would please ever so delicately tap the like button, I would be eternally grateful. It's great for the YouTube algorithm. And also, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel, which is the best channel on all of the YouTubes. There is science behind that, to just take my word at it. No need to research further. A uh, shout out to XRP Crypto Wolf uh, for sending this story to me. Uh, which leads to the PR Newswire piece, and is also covered by a number of other sources, including uh, th this piece from Crypto Media Outlet U Today. And they titled this, Ripple's partner MoneyGram integrates with Global Money Express, leading South Korean remittance firm. And uh, I'll show you the stock price after I cover this a little bit, but uh, it seems that uh, what they're doing in terms of these types of developments, and of course, you know, let's be real. You know what set this off, right? A, year, a little over a year ago, Ripple uh, partnering with MoneyGram. That's what really set off this notable uh, whirlwind of price activity over the last 12 months. And there's been a lot of times where there's major spikes and retracements, fine. But I, I still think that the impetus for, for this was was Ripple. It, it really was that, that partnership here. And so they've had this focus where they're really seeking to go digital. And certainly utilizing XRP as a bridge currency was a major piece of this. But, uh, let's dig in here. As reported by PR Newswire, one of Ripple's major partners in P2P remittances, MoneyGram, uh, has spread the word about its new partner in Asia. And these types of developments, again, this is, I think, it, it, it's all adding up. It's, it's, it's resulting in confidence in, uh, in speculators. People are buying the stock. Uh, but uh, this time, the U.S. payment giant is, uh, is expanding to South Korea and is partnered with the major local fintech company Global Money Express, or GME for short. This collaboration will be most beneficial for individuals who wire their funds from South Korea to Asia and China, the article states. Now, according to Camila Chidal, I'm probably not saying that right, but yeah. You know, I'm giving it the old college try. Uh, MoneyGram COO and head of the firm's digital business section, striking partnerships with major fintech, fir fintech firms <coughs> excuse me, is a part of MoneyGram's plan to expand its digital growth. And uh, they've certainly been expanding uh, in, in that realm. Uh, you know, it kind of amped that up, at least a little bit. I mean, they had stuff in the works, don't get me wrong. But it's the, it's the pandemic situation, obviously, not surprisingly. Additionally, their retail side of business just kind of fell off the map. But it's not like they did something horrendously wrong, such as pandemic life, right? you got to live your best COVID life, man. And MoneyGram's just trying to do it by going digital. Uh, and, of course, another major fintech, since that was cited there, obviously Ripple. Uh, now, she stated that lately, MoneyGram has reported 100% uh, year-over-year growth in digital transactions in May, uh, partnering with a P2P payments giant as big as GME, which is also a fast-growing company, is necessary for ensuring MoneyGram's further expansion in the area of, uh, of digital payments. Now, uh, in late May, MoneyGram also teamed up with South Korean money transfer company E9Pay, uh, which uh, is also a major milestone for MoneyGram's expansion. So very cool stuff there. Um, now let's take a look at the stock price here. So it's sitting here at three dollars and uh, and twenty two cents. So what I pulled up is the year to date chart, and you can see. So where was that at the beginning? It was down uh, two dollars and six cents. Now for for a little frame of reference here, a year ago when Ripple partnered with MoneyGram, the stock price, the lowest that I can recall anyway, it was $1.39. And you can see recently it hit its year-to-date high, uh, or, or 2020 high would be a better way to word that, um, 
at three dollars and seventy four cents, and it's uh, now it's at three dollars and twenty three cents. So it just changed again. So it, it you know it bounces around like stocks do, cryptos do the same thing. Although fine, crypto is a bit more volatile, uh, but but that's notable because it, you didn't see the, these types of price gyrations for this stock, not to this degree, prior to Ripple. Now, when Ripple joined, ultimately, if you fast forwarded like three months later, the stock price for MoneyGram it did get up to I want to say six bucks, maybe a little over that, and there's some major retracement. But uh, here, I'll even share the one year so you can kind of see that. Yeah, so here's the, the high. This would have been on September 11th, $6.11 here. So it, it did kind of go back down. But uh, it's not surprised after a huge ramp up like that, you'd see a retracement. We're kind of used to retracements in the world of crypto, are we not? And so, but anyway, it's been going back up. And, um, and you know, no doubt if, if the speculators are having this, this renewed confidence for this calendar year, so here's back to 2020, uh, they're probably doing something right. Because news actually matters when it comes to stocks, typically. Okay, fine, you can get a little bit of FOMO, you can get some panic selling and when you're talking about the, that asset class as well. But still, news actually matters a bit more. An actual real-world ado adoption and accomplishments, right? <laughs> With crypto, it's kind of like, eh, I don't know, win moon, win Lambo. The answer is Friday, 2 p.m. Be there or be square. Take a look at this now. From you today, 29.5 million XRP moved by plus token scam, while 71.5 million XRP transacted over past hour. Now, at some point within the last week or so, I, I talked about this plus token scam, and it was fascinating to me because I, I didn't realize until I started doing some research, but the plus token scam, although not as well known as BitConnect, it is the biggest scam in the history of crypto. It was a 2.9 million, uh, I'm sorry, a billion, 2.9 billion dollar Ponzi scheme, whereas BitConnect was 2.6 billion in uh, also a Ponzi scheme, of course. So uh, some terrible people making that, uh, making all that a reality here. And so with the, with the plus token scam, and again, it really is purely a Ponzi, mostly happened overseas, or at least relative to where I am, maybe you are overseas, relative to where I am overseas in the United States here in the Midwest. <laughs> and so there's a plus token that you could purchase. There was a plus token wallet, and you could, uh, you could deposit eight different cryptocurrencies, including XRP, into it. And, uh, and I think it was kind of like, I don't know if staking would necessarily be the right word, but you can kind of earn, in, in theory, interest off of whatever you put in the wallet. And uh, that did not go well. Okay, that uh, that kind of went that kind of went bye bye. And so a chunk of it, I can't remember the dollar figure. I can't remember if it was even mentioned in this article. Um, it may not have been the total, but it was a massive amount of XRP that ultimately got snagged uh, from XRP community members here. And that was kind of a big story in my mind. And I just I didn't even realize that XRP was such a big part of it here. But you got these uh, d bag scammers moving it around. So they they've been kind of silent in terms of moving for most of this calendar year. Uh, there is also another news story I didn't bother pulling up here, but I can just mention it. Uh, Ethereum was a part of this, of course, not surprisingly, right? Some of the top cryptos here. And uh, it's been on the move within the last day or so. And prior to that, uh, those Ethereum funds had, had been dormant for, I want to say, half a year, roughly. Uh, it may have been December 2019, somewhere thereabout. And so th the whole theory is that these, these scammers, they don't want to get caught all at once moving the, the whole load. So they're just moving bits and pieces here at a time. And you know maybe they'll lose some of it gets caught up in exchanges and they don't properly mask their transactions. But uh, I don't know what their plan is to, to wash this stuff. But I wouldn't be surprised if it involved some... Uh, some privacy coins. Anyway, the XRPL monitor has announced a fraud alert as it detected the founders of the biggest Bitcoin scam plus token in China, moving their stolen riches in the fourth most uh, popular coin, XRP. The XRPL monitor has spotted 29.5 million XRP transferred by plus token crypto scam participants. This sum totals $5.4 million. It took the senders uh, three consecutive transactions in a stream of nine crypto transfers, which saw a total of 71.5 million XRP moved. According to the analytics website BitHomp, uh, six of those transactions were made by anonymous users, and three were marked with fraud alert after being connected uh, to, to Plus Token. And that is a cool thing about BitHomp. I just found out they, they did this recently when I was covering this uh, in the last video where I talked about this. But if there's a known fraud um, address on the XRP ledger, on, if you go on BitHomp and punch in that, that address, there's in big red print, it says fraud alert. It's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it kind of just calls it out there. But, uh, man, I, I hope these people get caught. But uh, we, we, we shall see. I, I just... 
you know, and here's the thing. So, like, with the scam, actually, there were initially, after this all went down, actually, six of the main people running this actually did get arrested. I haven't been able to find any updates in any of crypto media news. None. Um, there was one article where they talked about it, I mentioned in my last video, but it didn't actually say anything that was happening. But there were other participants outside of this that, obviously, they're not behind bars and they're uh, continuing to uh, operate their, their scam. Well, maybe that's not the right way to word it because the plus token shut down. But, uh, you know, the, the, their ill-gotten gains, they're, they're still uh, functioning as a team to try and get that turned into precious fiat currency. But uh, we, you know what? It's just, it goes back to some sage wisdom from my grandpappy, and he once said, People are no damn good. Indeed, sage wisdom, very wise. That's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.